think this has been a long journey for the European banks, and they've obviously been you know, working to get to this position you know, for many years now. But the fact is, their their balance sheets are in much better shape. You know, they focused on on their core businesses, and you know, are trying to drive those to to deliver better returns. And so, a lot of hard work has been done, and I think we are seeing the benefits. It's very important that they get back to a place, and hopefully, by the end of the year, they'll be in that place where they can return capital to shareholders. In the in the event that they have excess capital, they're obviously all going through their stress tests, um, you know, right now. So, so, so that's where they've come from. I, the, the operating environment has, has clearly been you know, very attractive over the last um, you know, number of months, and you've seen that reflected in the earnings. And we'd expect that to continue. So, you know, the outlook for the for the balance of the year you know, continues to look strong and um, yeah, and robust. Uh, but but I, the longer term questions remain, and, and I think questions about your know, consolidation, who are going to be the key players? Are you going to start to get your know, consolidation across the European space so that you start to get the emergence of, of European institutions, you know, which can build and grow to you know similar scale and size? You know, some of the big global firms coming from other parts, you know, in particular in particular the US. And so I think the consolidation story. Yeah, will will be the next the next chapter that we get to. Um, you know, just given the underlying strength of the uh, of the firms right now. Really interesting you say that again. Your colleague Yerna was saying earlier that uh, you're seeing a lot of national consolidation, but not so much on the cross border front. Um, I just want to take you uh, again back to what we were discussing about the pickup and the general recovery, and with the rollout of vaccination, especially in this country, doing quite well. And more and more banks are asking their employees to come back to the offices. And I know that there's a report out there saying that Goldman are asking their employees to come back to the office and be fully operational as of June the 21st. How do you see the, the future of working? And is there a, an environment where you can keep the flexible working structure in place, given that the bank was still pretty... Uh, productive and produce these amazing results in a year where a lot of the employees were actually working from home. Well, a, a couple of points. You know, you first, we've got to recognize the June 21 date you know, may move, so we'll obviously you know, navigate around that. You know, second, you focus on on productivity. You know, I have no doubt about the productivity of our people over the last you know, 12, 15 months. You know, extraordinary productivity. The question is sustainability, and can you really sustain? You know those levels of operation. You know when you're all sitting at home, um, and I would have put a big question mark around that. I, I think the productivity, you know, was outstanding. The question is sustainability. You know we're bringing in you know 500 interns. You know through the summer we're going to have our you know, new recruits coming out of universities joining us at the end of the summer. You know, we've got to integrate you know that group and that cohort into the organisation. We've got to train them. We've got to you know, introduce them and. You get them to understand and participate in our culture as, a, as an organization, you know, how we operate as an apprenticeship model. And so I, I think being together is really important. We've, we, we've got a lot of people back already. Um, the people who are back like being back, see the benefits and are staying back. And, and, and the numbers keep growing. And so I'm, I'm quite confident the expectation of our people is that the office will be their main place of work. There will always be the opportunity for flexibility that has in the past. I think we've you know, learned a few things over the last 15 months as to you know, how to optimize you know, flexibility. So I think flexibility will go to a, a different level, but the, the main place of operation will be the office. I'm confident about that for our organization and our people um, support that. And, and, and we get that feedback you know, certainly from the people that are back. And, and we, we, we have you know, quite a number back you know, as we speak right now. Uh, Richard, I want to just uh, dig a little deeper into your thoughts on consolidation. Who are going to be the key players to watch in Europe? And do you think it's possible that we could see European banks come together and scale up to actually rival the U.S. giants? What would need to happen in order to see that consolidation actually come through? Well, you know, a, a, a couple of things. You know, you, you, first of all, the, the incentives from the, from the regulatory side you know, need to be in place to, to, to motivate that. And I, you know, I think having you know, a single regulator, the ECB, you're know, having everything under one roof, you're know, not you're know, breaking beyond the the requirements of, of ind individual countries and individual um, you know, central banks and, and regulators in the different countries across Europe. You know, if you could feed up into one 
once you know central organization streamline um, regulation and make it more cost effective you know think about the incentives that it would take to actually you know get these banks to come together and uh, you know, and, to, uh, and to cross borders yeah you know, a, a really really important point for you know for the regulators to focus on and, and then it's going to be global competition i think as you know as europe continues to integrate continues to come together as their clients continue to operate on a pan european basis again there'll be an, there'll be an incentive from from the, from the revenue side so i think we'll start to see it it's no surprise that domestic consolidation is the first step in that we're seeing it but once that journey is over you know the next logical step is to is is to cross borders Mm. Oh, and I guess talking about deal making beyond just the banking sector, what do you think, where are you telling your investment bankers to go look for opportunities? Where do you see the most attractive opportunities when it comes to deal making in the year ahead? Well, the, under, the underlying economic trends are obviously highly supportive. And if anything, Europe is accelerating right now. And so your companies are seeing really strong performance. You saw it in the Q, Q1 results. Um, so th there's confidence. If you talk to CEOs across Europe, you know, they're feeling confident. They, they're turning their attention to the, the deals that they may have dreamt about doing for, for a long period of time. They've, they've got the underlying performance in their own businesses. Financing markets are supportive. It looks like economic growth will you know, certainly be robust through the balance of 21 and, and you know, most likely into 22. And so the outlook looks, look, looks good. So really across sectors, you know, I, I would say that the strategic opportunity is significant. You know, financing markets strong, you can get done what you, what you want to get done. And, and then, you know, the new parts of the European economy, the digital growth, you know, we actually hosting a, a big uh, digital technology conference next week and huge participation. You know, the number of unicorns across Europe, you know, we're well through 100, up 50% over the last, you know, three or four years. And so, you know, strong growth across the digital uh, technolo techn technology space. Uh, and then the green economy and the investments that are being put in place there. And so I, I think we're, we're set for a, you know, really constructive period from, from the corporate side. Just to pick up on that, can I ask you where you see the UK fitting into all of that and potential opportunities? Because if you look at the city of London, it's, it's been a double whammy the last 12 months. You've had the pandemic impact, but also the Brexit impact as well, with many employees, including employees of Goldman, uh, being relocated to other European cities. How do you see the future of the city of London from here, especially when there's still, still to this day, a lack of clarity about regulatory equivalence? Well, you, you, you talk about a double whammy. I, you know, I'd say that the city broadly was highly constructive you know, and played a you know, very supportive role through the, the COVID period. And so, I, I, and you saw that you know, translating into the results of the institutions, you know, really strong performance. Um, you know, and, and that, you know, that, that, that obviously continues. So, so if anything, you know, the COVID experience for the city, I think was, was constructive and, and the role of City played you know, broadly across the UK economy was constructive. You know, Brexit. You know, that's not something we spend a lot of time talking about now. We've we've made the moves. You know, we've shifted our infrastructure. Our infrastructure is in place. Our people are in place, and so we're looking at opportunity and you know, working with our European client set, working with our our UK client set. Obviously, out of you know the UK, yeah, you know, we have a real global um, footprint, and and we continue to we continue to drive that. So I, I think the the city of London and the opportunity for the city, you know, remains you know very strong. But we'll continue to grow our European businesses, you know, as well. And there's you know there's 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 plenty there's plenty to do.